Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Pros and Cons of an Interesting Transformer-Based Gate Driver. There are two references relevant to the presentation of this video. One is a power tip, both of them of Texas Instrument, as a matter of fact. One is a short uh, article by Brian King, and then there is a reference design of a flyback power supply. So here is the circuit that I'm going to discuss in this uh, presentation. It's a driver, gate driver. This is the power transistor. We have here a transformer, which operates like a transformer. It's not a flyback connection. Here we have an auxiliary circuit, and this is actually the driver that generate the signal that eventually ends up at the gate of the transistor. So these are the signals of the driver, while the gate signals look like this. As you can see, we are getting here actually a bipolar drive, and I'll of course uh, discuss this later on. Now since this is a transformer, and it is uh, driven by sort of a single-ended uh, transistor, then there is a concern here about the reset of the magnetization inductance of the transformer. So this is an issue that I'm going to discuss throughout this presentation. However, I'm not going to draw this inductance, just to keep in mind that whenever we see this transformer, there is a magnetization inductance in it. So here is how this uh, driver operates at the on time, that is when the drive is high, we are actually turning on this transistor. So the drain is actually at a ground potential, except for the very small voltage drop across it. So that the drive is actually fed to the primary of the transformer. And then we have the voltage coming out at the secondary, which is actually fed to the gate. We can see it here in a simplified version. Here is the signal, transistor is turned on, this drain is now at low potential, and then the signal is actually feeding the transformer, and therefore at the output we see here actually a reflection of the input drive. So this is the drive, and this will be the voltage that is fed to the transformer. And this is the reset stage. The output voltage of the driver is low, so therefore the transistor is not conducting. The energy stored in the magnetization inductance now is actually fed back into the source, so therefore we are actually recycling the energy that was stored in the magnetization inductance during the on stage. Now here is a simplified view here. The drive is low, transistor is not conducting, there is energy here in the magnetization inductance, and the current is now flowing. The polarity is reversed, so the current now drops down to zero. At this time, the voltage across the primary is actually reversed. This is why we get a negative output here at the drive, and eventually the current is supposed to drop to zero. So then we have this idling period in which there is zero here, no current, no energy at all, and so we have a zero here and also a zero at the output. As it turns out, in the real circuits with the parasitics included, like the capacitances and uh, strain inductances, this really is not the real picture. We'll see it later on. So an important point and an advantage of this configuration is that this energy stored in the magnetization inductance is recycled. So we have the current going up during the on time and then it goes down during the off time. So the energy is actually back, sent back to the source and therefore the energy lost is minimal. Now for this reset operation to work properly, we needed the reset time should be at least equal, preferably larger than the on time. So therefore, in this configuration in which the reset voltage is about equal to the on voltage, then the maximum duty cycle is 50%. If we need more than 50% duty cycle, then we need to increase the reset voltage. This can be done by a Zener diode shown here, 
And then, of course, the voltage of the reset is higher, and therefore the reflected voltage to the secondary, that is to the gate, is higher, so it'll get a larger negative value, so one has to make sure that we are within the gate voltage limits. So, in this case, first of all, we have a higher negative voltage, and secondly, some of the energy will now be lost to the zener diode, and the proportion of the energy lost is about this ratio, that is the voltage of the zener diode divided by the total voltage of the reset, so that some of the energy in this case will be lost. I'm now moving to the reference design of TI, which is a flyback converter, 5 volt output, 10 amp, and the point is that it is using this concept of a gate drive that we have seen earlier. Now the flyback topology that is used in this uh, reference design is not a conventional one, it's a flyback with two transistors, one at the upper side and one in the lower side, and these two transistors work together such that when they are on, here it is, they are connecting the primary to the bus voltage, thereby charging the energy to the primary, and then during the off time, the two transistors are off, energy goes out to the load, of course, and then the nice thing about this configuration is that the energy locked in the leakage inductance is now recycled and actually sent back to the source. So this topology has the advantage that the energy of the leakage inductance is recycled as compared to the normal or conventional flyback which has only one transistor and then the leakage inductance energy is usually dissipated in a resistor using a clamp and a diode. So the advantage of this topology is that this uh, energy of the leakage inductance is recycled, but the penalty of course is that you have two transistors. So this is the topology that is used in this uh, reference design, but I'm bringing it up because it is using this concept of gate driver that we have seen earlier, that is this transformer, here is the auxiliary transistor, and so this flyback, this is the upper transistor, this is the lower transistor, this is the coupled inductor of the flyback, and here we see also the zener diode, it's a 5.1 volt zener, so that uh, the operation could be up to 50% the duty cycle, perhaps a little bit more, but even at 50% you like to have an extra voltage for the reset. So let's see how this thing works. Here is a simplified version of the section that we are interested in. This is the driver. Now the nice thing about this uh, design is that this driver is now driving the two transistor. It is driving first of all directly to the low side MOSFET and then through this uh, unit it's driving the upper side transistor. So here it is. During the on time, this one is on. Here we have a high voltage which is turning on this transistor causing a, actually a short here, so the signal is actually fed to the primary and then we are feeding the upper transistor, so both transistors are on and during the off time there is no voltage here or the voltage is low and therefore we have the current of the magnetization inductance going back here into the source, this is the voltage source, uh, through this uh, zener of 5.1 volt. Just to demonstrate the operation of this driver, I've set up an LT-SPICE uh, schematics that uses this uh, driver. Now I'm not using a transformer with a coupling coefficient, but rather a ideal transformer with a coupling coefficient of 1, and here we have the magnetization inductance and the leakage inductance, and the reason for doing that is that I like to look at the magnetization current, which I cannot do if I'll be using a coupled inductor. So this is the transformer here. Here is the auxiliary transistor. This is actually a 
synchronized back converter. This is the upper transistor and lower transistor. In this case, of course, we are not operating the two transistors together, but rather one at a time. So therefore I have here two drivers. One is for the low side and this one is for the high side. There is a dead time between them just to make sure there is no shoot through. So this is just to demonstrate the operation of this driver. I've also added a network here for turning on the transistor fast by this one ohm and the diode for the turn off and turn on at a slower rate as is usually required. And here are the simulation results. We see here the input of the upper side driver. This is the current of the inductor, main inductor of the converter, the triangular waveform. And here we see the gate signal. This is for the high side, this one here, the green one. And this is going through this uh, transformer, while the low side is this one, which is of course very nice because it's uh, just a c direct connection between a buffer and the gate. While here we're going through the transformer, which has some leakage inductance to it. And therefore we see some oscillation. Now this circuit has not been optimized. It is just for demonstration, just, just to show the general waveform that you'd expect. And the point that I'm trying to show here is that with the output capacitances of the transistor, the leakage inductances and the capacitance of the diode, as a matter of fact, we are not getting an ideal waveform, far from it. So one has to be careful when using this type of a driver just to make sure that the parasitics will not kill you with some oscillation and spice and all other problems that might arise. You can see the oscillation here. This is the voltage across the auxiliary transistor. And you see here the oscillation between the probably leakage inductance and the capacitances. And again, here we see a charging actually of a capacitor. So again, it is far from being an ideal situation with textbook waveform. This is real life. Now the current of the inductance is of course going up during the on time and then it goes down, but it doesn't decay here to zero. As a matter of fact, it goes to negative. And this is because you have capacitance, you have the inductance of the primary of the transformer. So actually there is some oscillation here. And so there is a current in the reverse direction and it really don't taper off to zero current but there is sort of a continuous oscillation and then it starts again. So the purpose of bringing this simulation is just to point out that things are far from being ideal uh, in this case, as a matter of fact, in all cases. Now in the reference design of this circuit, and again, I'm showing this part of the drive, Texas Instrument is actually showing some test results that they did on this converter. And here are some of the results. And here is the switching waveform and they have it for various uh, input voltages. And what of interest to us is this uh, one at the top, which is the gate of the low side power MOSFET. So we are talking about this voltage here. Now we are of course interested in the voltage of this upper transistor, which is uh, fed by this uh, gate driver. Unfortunately, they don't show it. Well, I guess there might be a reason for that, but at any rate, we don't see what is the waveform of this uh, upper transistor gate voltage. The other waveform, and this uh, relates to the power transistor, look pretty good. So the operation seem to be okay. I don't see any problem in that but it's kind of disappointing that they are not showing the gate of the high side transistor. So let me say a few words of conclusion. We see that the basic operation of this uh, driver is fine. There's really no problem with it. Probably you can design it to operate okay, but parasitics may cause distortion, malfunction, oscillation, spikes, etc. 
So one has to be extremely careful about that, about the leakage inductance of the transformer, the capacitance of the transformer, and the effect of the output capacitance of the transistor, etc. And finally, the competitivity of uh, this approach as compared to present IC solution of isolated gate driver is really questionable. We have today isolated gate driver at fairly low cost. Now the transformer is not that cheap, so I wonder if it is really competitive to use this approach as compared to integrated isolated gate drive. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope you find it of interest and perhaps this will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.